So you got your hands on from the depth, and now you're quite confused. Good. Then you're watching the right video. In this little new gameplay tutorial or player's guide, we will be getting through the um, basic things you need to know to get started in from the depth. So first in the launch screen, we can check the settings. Um, you may have some weird outline. You can see the birds here. They have this kind of weird outline. I don't know who likes that. Uh, kind of hard. I don't know if you see that from here. You see it looks super weird. Anyways, go into settings. And if you scroll down, they are here. Enable edge, de edge detection. Just uh, click that and uh, this will be no issue no more. So uh, if we're just going to begin a little bit here. Uh, if you have performance issue, turn off this. So disable GPU Ocean. It will save lots of FPS. Uh, and then you can also do like this. Like boost my performance or like simple. That might work. Otherwise, if you have a pretty modern system, just click maximum quality. To see decently underwater, make sure that the clarity factor uh, is up from like, I don't know, this 1 to 10. Much better. Another thing, if you have performance issues, uh, you can go in here and uh, turn down load distance. If this is really low, uh, you will have much better performance. If this is really high, you will see things in detail from uh, distance. And now lastly, before we begin here. Uh, in this game, there are different modes of building. You can toggle it with F3. And there is a mouse-based building system. And I know it's tempting to use this because this is how every other game is played. But I seriously implore you to not even try mouse-based. Start with key-based in early game so that it will not be hard to transition. Because this game is really built for this specific specifically developed key based system it's not built for mouse build system and if you do mouse based it will be inaccurate it will be clunky and it will be generally hell just learn how to use the key based system like don't even try mouse please so how do we start playing from the depth well i would suggest that you just learn how to build things into the designer game mode so if you go into the designer mode, you can build freely without resources and that's the easiest way to kind of get started and understand the components and we're gonna dive in there pretty soon. If you're looking for a bigger adventure, there is of course the adventure mode and there is the campaign. The campaign is a pretty big undertaking uh, and it can be a good way to learn. So the quest for nether is like really big. Uh, there is also the uh, there are some different campaigns here, uh, but the quest for Nether is, is the main. It can be a good way to learn, but if you start on this, I would suggest you play it on a pretty easy mode. In any way, there is also a land campaign. You can switch to different worlds. So basically, if uh, we go uh, to the content tab, and on the content tab you can select another uh, planet. So here we have Ashes of the Empire, it's a land campaign. And then you can go back to single player and uh, start a campaign. And here you can see now we suddenly have uh, other campaigns. So that's how that works. But uh, it's easier to build in water, so we probably want to start there. There is a Glau campaign too, but it isn't very well updated. They are going to update it, but as of making this video, uh, you should not try out Glau because it's a little bit under-optimized for the time of being. A greater way to get started than the campaign is story missions. And here we have a lot of story missions which I haven't done on this install. So uh, anyways, just join in there and uh, you will be handheld uh, through the process. Adventure mode is a survival type of game. It can be a fun way to kind of get started and just uh, understand how to die. Uh, but let's just dive into the designer so we can get the hand of how to make a basic vehicle. Because realistically, you want to do this before you uh, do anything other. So we're just going to go here and learn some basic. So we destroy all vehicles like this. Very nice. And then we can close down this. And here we go around. We can fly around here and we can build. So how do we start building? Uh, we also have a character and we switch to our character on tab so now we're falling freely here underwater and if we click e 
and then click E again, our camera is not attached to the character anymore, so then we can free fly without being attached. And that's kind of how that works. So to start build something, you click B and a block appears. Now this block is falling and it can be a little bit annoying to build something uh, in the water while it's bobbing around like this. So what you can do is you can just click caps lock and you freeze the vehicle in uh, air. So here we have the key based system. If we switch to the F3, uh, we can have the mouse based system. And it's quite clunky, especially when working with sub objects. So uh, I regret telling you that you can click F3 to switch the mouse. Just learn the key based VSAD uh, space alt to go down and you can place blocks around here. Now this game adds up to a lot of blocks, uh, so to not have a lot of blocks, they have larger blocks like 4 meter beams. And we want to use the 4 meter beams uh, to not make it lag as much. Uh, and why should we bother even? Well, basically because if we use these 4 meter beams, we actually get a free health bonus. So they are more uh, healthy, they are more than 4 times the health of a single block and that's to encourage you to use the big beams uh, and then it will lag less very nice now we should absolutely not build the uh, block this way because uh, or the build we shouldn't build the ship this way because you can see there is a little arrow here that's uh, red and green and stuff like that and that arrow tells the direction of your vehicle so um, make sure you build in the right direction and if we click N, we can get some symmetry planes. If we click once, it's uh, in the middle here. And if we click uh, one time, it's between two blocks. So that you can decide if you want to build uh, symmetrically or asymmetrically. In any way, uh, different types of blocks are different types of floaty. So here we have a lot of wooden blocks. And if we click this uh, X here, we can see all the other type of building blocks. And I know this might seem a little bit daunting when getting into uh, the game, uh, but this tutorial will cover the basics. And then I have the big playlists with long tutorials and a big playlists with uh, short instant tutorials. I implore you to check those out uh, to get detailed understanding of stuff. Because uh, realistically, it's a lot of blocks and a lot of tabs, but you won't be visiting all of them at once and we'll just take it easy. It's, it's not as hard as you think it is. However, From the Depth is a game that's extremely hard to uh, master. Because if you have a thousand hours in this game, uh, it's not actually very much. Really, it's, it's kind of insane. 1000 hours in from the depth is not much. So expe expect to spend a lot of time here and no matter how long you have played this game, like I played this game for many years and I have still have lots to learn left. So it's a really fun game on that measure. So uh, wood is the best health points per material, but it's uh, very uh, it's very brittle. You know, it just destroyed getting destroyed easily. Stone is pretty cheap and pretty sturdy as well and stone like you don't have to think about structural integrity in this game i can build a stone bean that goes out like this and it doesn't even sink very much isn't that crazy um, and we can just build more construction over here and unless someone shoots or destroys this block by a weapon uh, this won't break structural integrity in from the depth is not the thing uh, there are other blocks that are very much floaty, and the flo floatiest block of all, you can see they have a relative buoyancy, so wood and alloy, and alloy is a little bit more floaty. Um, and if you build things out of alloy, you might actually make them a little bit too light a lot of the times. Right, so we have metal. Metal, this will be your to-go block. This is the best block for armor. Um, so this is the best block uh, in general that pe most people use the most of. Um, and if you combine wood and uh, metal a little bit, you will make something that naturally floats, which is nice. So uh, don't be tempted to make something out of heavy armor too much. Uh, heavy armor is the absolutely most sturdy block and this block is really expensive too. You can see the material cost and if you want to spawn in this block in the designer, each 4 meter beams costs 100 materials. If we compare to wood, each 4 meter wood beam costs 4 material. 
and each 4 meter metal beam costs 20 materials. So heavy armor is super expensive and should only be used on very specific parts. And that's, uh, that's the basic blocks you need to know about right now. Then we have some surge protectors. Uh, there is EMP damage in this game and it can be a good idea to have some surge protectors here in the your build that will suck up the EMP damage instead of letting your AI taking the damage. In any case, we should be building a boat and I can remove this block and this now falls off. Now, uh, if I didn't want to do that, I can click Ctrl Z and uh, this will now be uh, placed back. Very nice. Then we can also click Backspace. And now, if I remove this, you can see it doesn't fall off, which is very nice when building. Uh, so then we can remove some blocks we want to and not just make the entire thing fall off by itself. And if I just regret that uh, I want it to fall off, I just click backspace, I get this little warning here, reactivate and it can now fall off. So that's something we can uh, know about there. Now, this game is very floaty. You don't need like a lot of wood to make stone or metal or stuff like that float. So it's, I don't know, it, it's just how it works. So we can just build a little box out of wood here and we can then add some metal and stuff outside of this thing. And the build menu is of course on E, if I didn't tell you that. So E will be a very frequent button. Uh, if you hold tab, you can rotate around blocks like this, so you can place them in a fashion you desire. Moving around with a mouse key here to go around. If you go out of build mode and you don't know how to get back, you'll just aim at the thing you want to build on and you click B again. And then we can click on the uh, E menu here to get the build menu just like that. And we can click the middle mouse button. And here we have another uh, menu. There is a lot of menus in this game. So here we can see some hot tips on what you can do and how to use your control. Very nice. And if you click this thing with the right click, this end button, then you will get a centered, automatically centered little uh, symmetry plane, which can be quite useful. Right, so we just want to build around here and of course we can place blocks like that so then we can fill in manually there and we can just uh, go back and hold to build some more. Very nice. So we can just build a little stone box here so we have some basic protection for our components. Now this game cares about uh, hydro and aerodynamics which means that you will probably want to make your things a little bit pointy and then they will magically be uh, automatically faster than if you would have just a box. So we're making this little nice pointy box which you can see I built backwards despite my tip. So uh, I'm going to build it the other way around. Right, good job Jimmyism. So uh, make it a little bit extra pointy in the front here, so we have some basic shape. So how do we uh, add stuff into this? Well, we want to make it a little bit stable. And to make it stable, what we can do is actually to add a little bit of lead underneath it to make it, that was rubber. Uh, we can have rubber there and we can have some lead underneath here, just to have some kind of weight stability. Now this is the cheapest way to do stability and probably not what we want to do uh, later in the game. But anyways, it's a good way to start and if we if we feel we are a little bit unfloaty, we can go to water tab and we can add an air pump and have an air pump inside this little area. It doesn't cost any materials or anything to keep it running so we can just add it here. So if you have a real hard time making your boat floaty enough, a simple way to fix it is to replace some of your metal with alloy. And how did I do this? Well, I hold shift button and then I hold mouse one and I will automatically replace. And since we have symmetry plane, the other side's blocks will be replaced too. So that's a great way. Uh, and of course, alloy does cost as much as metal, but it's uh, less health point, but it's light. So that's the pro. In any case, we have some propellers and stuff like here, so let's add a little propeller to be able to uh, steer or maneuver our boat. I'm gonna have a 
big little propeller down there. Now, what's really nice with this game is that if we click G, we can align the block to the way we're facing. Align it inwards there, we can have a propeller on each side there. Now, we want to have some stability. We're going to aim a propeller upwards here and here. So now we have, have the, well, ability to make it stable in a little way, which is quite nice and needed. Right, here we have AI components and uh, just to get started I would actually just put down a basic AI, a prefab. You can save your own prefabs in the prefab menu but that's for a later time. Right now you should just start with learning this. And one tip I do want to give you in general is that when you're building it from the depth start building really small. Don't start building big ships. Like this is the maximum size thing you should, should start doing uh, when it's a boat or a plane or whatever. Don't build anything bigger than this because um, you can do that when you know a little bit more. Your first 50 designs will not be very, very nice. It, won't, it will not be what you want. So you want to rebuild it later anyways. No need to spend a lot of time to build something big you can't use later anyways. Anyways, here we have a basic AI thing. Uh, we're not going to look at all these components too much, uh, but what we are going to do is we're going to check this little thing here. We go into the AI, any of these blocks, and we click Q and we can set it up. So it's really important to have the right settings for your AI. And that's why it's smart to start with building a boat because it's easiest to not do anything that kind of is failing. So what can we do? Well, just let's set up a broadside. This is gonna be a broadside maneuver ship. Uh, we leave it as it is. This is probably fine. Uh, we set this on water. I think uh, this looks like good settings right now. And what is what we vehicle is this? Well, this is a ship or tank. It's apparently the same. So we have a ship or tank. Let's allow pitch control. So we click that and we're going to set the idle pitch angle to zero. Why did we do this? Uh, well, because then we will automatically control the pitch, which I'm going to show you very soon. Uh, so that's just a basic setup. Just use pitch controls, set it to zero and you're down there. Right. Uh, then we have some additional routines. You don't need that. Here we have PIDs. You can fine tune these values to make it stable. It's not something we need to bother with in this early tutorial. Name your main frame. Beautiful. So here we have this little AI wireless transmitter that was added to our AI in this prefab. This is very nice. Then we can use this to, to connect up other components. So uh, in order for your vehicle to automatically see enemies, if you don't want to uh, like aim all the weapons yourself all the time, which you don't want to, uh, then you'll need to have a wireless receiver. So we're gonna add a wireless receiver to these AI connectors in order for us to add some components here, like a laser tracker. And on top of that, we can have a camera. And now our vehicle can detect uh, enemy ships and have this little laser tracker in order to kind of aim. And the nice thing with laser tracker is that it allows you to put another thing on top of it. So we could have a radar 360, a camera 360, but a laser um, rangefinder combined with a camera 360 is the best minimal requirement um, that you should have on your basic vehicle. So just start out using this. And when you wanna be a little bit more accurate, you can add other things. Watch an instant tutorial that goes into more detail for that. So why is our, why, why do we not move? Why don't we control this ship? Well, uh, this ship isn't controlling itself because it doesn't have an engine. So these propellers, they need to be powered by an engine. And for some weird reason, when you're building jets or using ion thrusters or advanced things like this, uh, you would imagine them using fuel. No, they use engine power. The same is true for lasers. Lasers also use engine power. Uh, I don't know, it's just how it is. There are many ways to generate engine power, like fuel engines, steam engines, 
um, RTG electric engines. Uh, we can do a lot of different steam engines, but we can even have jet engines to power things uh, and provide engine power <clears throat> and not only thrust. But uh, to make it a little bit simple, we're just going to decide we're going to go with fuel engines. And you can go into detail and make some different types of uh, fuel engines and they can be really good and really interesting and uh, we're actually going to make one here. So just align up this. You can have we have this little knob here. That's a connector connects to another part. Then we have some crankshafts. We add them in a row there. Fantastic. And uh, engine needs cylinders or well, we can have some cylinders here. Uh, now you will want to have some coolers on this engine otherwise it's gonna overheat um, or coolers in form of uh, exhausts is a great way to cool them great so it cools itself which means we are now ready to put some power on them um, which well how do we put fuel in an engine with injectors or with carburetors and we can just uh, the injector is stronger but less efficient we can just add here and it's probably going to complain that it will uh, potentially be a little bit too hot. So let's just slap on a big radiator on here and uh, pray that it works. In any case, this engine does not have any... Uh, it doesn't have any fuel. We need to add fuel. So just add a box, big box of fuel. The bigger the engine, the more fuel we need. And suddenly everything starts moving because in the lower right corner you can see we have uh, 6,000 engine power um, available and we're not using a lot of it. So here we can see we are now using and moving around. And thankfully nowadays uh, the game tries to set up thing automatic control and a lot of the times it uh, actually works. Uh, for your main propulsion, I would however switch from automatic to manual control and click this pusher preset uh, and it will work a little bit more sensible. The other one, the other stuff actually works a lot of the time with automatic control, so you can just leave them be. So uh, these little rods here, we can of course join them together to a single output. Because the thing is, for some interesting reason, they all need to be like the exhaust, the exhaust that the exhaust is leaving from need to have an infinite straight line uh, of free air above it. Otherwise, it will think it's blocked. For, yeah, it, it's just how it is. Great, we have engine power. Um, now, there are other ways to store materials. So, the fuel boxes are required to make materials into usable fuel. They are also kind of material storage tanks. Uh, we can also have other material storage tanks, like just material storage tanks. Here we have large material container and in the lower right corner you can now see the little <coughs> hammer and the little uh, key. They are now 12,000 uh, capacity. Then we have something called ammo access. So, in the same way as uh, fuel, the ammo boxes doesn't actually store ammo, just like the, uh, well, fuel boxes actually doesn't store fuel. They store materials and make them usable as ammo uh, and fuel respectively. Now, the ammo boxes are a little bit explosive, so put them in a place where if they blow up, they won't destroy anything super important. We can just have a couple of them and if you hover over them they will tell you how many are extractable and how many you need and if you run low during a fight you can see in the lower right corner that the ammo access has gone down to, re uh, to uh, like nothing so uh, when we're building we need to think a little bit of uh, aesthetics yes already so you can choose some nice colors down here and you can just build using this color and the block would automatically just be placed with that color very nice about aesthetics sometimes you will really want to place a block which you really can't play uh, can't place where you want it like you can't place this inside this one uh, and if you really want to do that well you can click ctrl shift and x and it will be put there uh, and it's just a mimic this block doesn't really exist it it's just there for the looks 
And if you want to choose yourself, uh, not like the block you're holding, you can just click Ctrl X and you can add a decoration and you can uh, fill, you can like search something and then you can like position it and do weird things. I don't know, like that. So that's, that's how people make really crazy, super detailed, very beautiful designs. They are using the decoration menu and they're really good at it. So we totally forgot about our character, which is somewhere, somewhere deep into the ocean and being generally very sad. So uh, let's move back here and build again and get our character on here so we can actually, uh, well, exist. We can have a share. You want to have a share for your things. Click Q on the share and you will spawn into it. Add a little ship's wheel and you can control uh, your ship yourself. And if you want to control your guns yourself, you can have a fire control computer. Right. So here we are. Uh, now we can move. You can see I click, I hold the uh, forwards and I can have main drive to 100%. And now we can steer, we can roll, we can pitch and we can do all of that. And it's going to be a little bit clunky and we probably want to let the AI doing that. So let us go back to building instead. Clicking Q lets me back into the seat. Clicking, no, clicking tab gets me back into the seat. And clicking tab again uh, makes me free form. Double click E, the camera is free. Click B on the ship and we can continue building. So there are different weapons in this uh, game and we're gonna go through the simple weapons first. Uh, go to the AI tab, local weapon controller, select all in one local weapon controller. And we can slap that down here. And then we can go to simple weapons and we can choose uh, some simple weapons here. Here we have all of the different simple weapons. Now, um, as fast as you can, um, maybe not the first day you play from the depth, but after the first day you play it, you should probably just not use simple weapons very often. Just when you have super tiny builds and it's not really practical. Uh, the simple weapons are automatically controlled. Uh, if they are adjacent to the uh, all-in-one weapon block, uh, local weapon controller or one block more. So this is still controlled. This is controlled. This is not controlled. This is definitely not controlled. This is controlled. This would be controlled. And it's kind of, uh, yeah, one, two, one, two, one, two. So if you would have like a broad cider like this, you could add a local weapon color thing here and then we go to simple weapons and select some cannons aligned by pressing g can put one there one there one there one there so if we go back to our seat here if we scroll now the ai controls the guns if we scroll up a little bit now i control the guns and i can aim these and when i click like um control I will fire them. If I click caps, I follow the uh, cannonball. So you can see you can aim around. You can see they are now reloaded and we can now fire them again. Very nice. Now simple weapons aren't very, very strong like that, but they're a good thing to get started. Another very simple and foolproof uh, weapon I'm going to show you how to make. That's uh, missiles, specifically vertical launch missiles. So what you want to do is go to AI, local weapon controller, all in one, place down one there, missile systems. So we have a missile controller. We can have like that. And then we have uh, medium missile launchers. Make sure it faces upward like this. We can have some medium gantries. We're not going to have huge missiles like this. And to make sure we don't hit any friendly vehicles, identify friend or foe. Very nice. Go into this one and it tries to set up something reasonable, but you probably want to change this or in this case it's actually perfectly set up. So we have a variable thruster, we have a fin to control it, we have a fuel tank to uh, well power it. And now we can see thrust duration is 16 seconds and the lifetime is 20 seconds. So uh, if we go to the variable thruster, we can control the thrust output and you should control it so that it's uh, equal to the lifetime usually. 
Now APN Guidance is good to have, makes you hit more uh, often. Active Raider Seeker, very nice. This is actually set up actually, uh, exactly as we might want it. The more payload we have, the more destruction it does. If you miss all the time, um, have an APN Guidance or possibly um, add more fins like more fins like that very nice vertical launch missiles uh, they are tested tested thing always works so uh, we have more weapon systems however and uh, what are some more weapon systems well the other weapon systems we usually want to put on turrets so that's exactly what we're gonna do we're clicking build here and we are going into sub objects we usually want to use the one axis turret, but for this tiny little gun I'm going to add here, we're going to use a two axis turret. Click G to align it forwards and place it down. And now we can build on top of this. So let's just make a very, very, very simple APS cannon. Advanced cannons, add a little firing piece, aim it forwards, clonk it down. Then we have some coolers. We need some coolers. We may need a uh, gauge increasers to make it a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna add some barrel here. Since we have it on a two axis turret, we don't actually need to have a mantlet. That's something you usually wanna have. And then we need some autoloaders. And uh, dependent on the size of the autoloader, it uh, kind of decides how long the shot you have can be. To make it reload faster, add ammo clips on them. And on this little ammo clip, you're gonna add ammo input feeder. And you want one for each clip and one per uh, autoloader like that. So we can go into this thing, create a new shell, shell and we can edit it. And we can uh, drop down gauge and right now we are on a uh, 120 millimeter can so we select that so we know how these stats are accurate the gunpowder makes it far away and here we have some different things we can have so we can have armor piercing head there are different heads like this is a separate tutorial of course we're just gonna have a heavy head and some solid warhead bodies to make it like a regular uh, like a regular slug basically all right, beautiful. Uh, we can close this down. We click assign, then we click assign to all intakes like that. And now all these insects uh, are assigned. Now you want to look at your cannon. You can see that the cooling limit is 12 RPM, autoloader limit and ammo uh, intake limit. They are all um, basically the same. And that's exactly what you will be aiming for. You want to make the autoloader limit, the ammo intake limit and the cooling limit the same. Uh, right. Now this isn't controlled by anything, so in order to make it even be controlled, we need to have a all-in-one local weapon controller uh, close to the turret block here. So you can see there, there, there. Uh, we can also place it under the turret uh, on the main construct. But there we have that, so now you can see I'm, I can actually aim around with this thing since I control the guns. And if I click, uh, well, if I click control, it shoots. Now I wonder why this one complains. It complains because no, maybe it doesn't have a mantlet. In any case, that's how to set up a very simple APS. Now let's go for a little bit more proper turret since uh, you got the hang of basic sub objects there. So for example, inside of here we have a 3x3 space and this little thing sticking out is a decoration. It will not collide. And uh, if you have a square hole, um, if you have if you have a square in a square it can rotate if it's three by three if it's five by five you need to cut off the corners of the construct that's gonna spin inside the square and if you want to make bigger turrets these are the templates the alloy on those templates are made to spin around inside the little well here so just spawn one of those and build your turret accordingly but this is the three by three so we can spin around in here for some weird reason now, there are uh, better ways to make cram, but just to make started, we're gonna make a lot of rod here with the connector block. 
and on the top of here we are going to have something called a firing piece. And uh, I describe crams as a bucket and in this bucket you can fill pellets and these pellets uh, can shoot things. So if we have more pellets uh, we can or if we have more pellets on this thing we can load our buckets more fast and if we have uh, a larger bucket they will deal more damage and we make a larger bucket by having a bigger gun basically actually I'll just realized we're gonna we're gonna remove some stuff there and I want to show you how to see how, how can we build this wood and see at the same time click P and the blocks will be miniaturized right so what you want to do is local weapon controller all in one replace this last block here and now this entire turret is controlled by the AI right so we add some pellets here we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have frag pellets and they are going to be connected up to each of these packers so these packers they have three outputs you can see one two three and they should be connected to pellets and that will make them pack the bucket and if you want to make the shot bigger then you want to have payload compactor and the uh, pellets will be more compact and you can fire more of them that's kind of how that works if you hover over this you can see this thing reloads every 18 seconds and it deals some damage now we don't have a barrel or anything like that so to make it aim and move around you want a couple of motor driven barrels to uh, kind of move around in 33 to 33 degrees degrees uh, the longer barrel you have the more accurate it will be and we can have some elevation barrel to make it do elevation better uh, since we are already moving perversely and you can like play around with these different barrels and get something nice there right uh, that's all the basics we're gonna do with cram cannons for now and uh, in general you want to protect your turrets with some kind of armor so that they do not die on you instantly if you get hit now cram turrets are very unexplosive so they are very forgiving and they deal a lot of damage but anyways now you can see we can aim around and move this thing we can fire and uh, the cram shot disappeared into oblivion but it just works one thing more that we should cover um, is you may be shot at by your enemies and that's very sad and how do we solve that well uh, we can shoot down your the enemy's missiles and sometimes even the cram shots by this simple little method add small missile launchers uh, aim it upwards we can add some launchers here and then we make some connectors and a little controller all right then you will go down to defense and select close in weapon systems and select all in one close in weapon controller and now it will try and control these missiles to uh, basically fire and shoot down incoming missiles because if you go to the small launcher you can see we have this thing they are already set up when you spawn one block it's a missile missile interceptor it's a fuel tank it's a fin so that's really handy uh, a quick half advanced tip that i probably shouldn't explain to you right now is that you can exchange the fuel tank for apn guidance move that up a little bit so it will be snappy and then you make sure that free internal space is used for fuel and you can see that they can still move around and we can actually make them even faster until their lifetime matches the uh, thrust duration right very nice and something you want to do is click Q and copy to all matching launch pads because otherwise this one won't be the same and that's something I forgot for this thing you know we set up this missile well that doesn't automatically get translated to this missile no so we need to copy to all matching launch pads which means we can go into this missile and make sure that this is actually a EMP missile instead. Look there, very easy. So that's how we set up uh, all of these things, very, very simply. How do we want to test our design? Well, uh, for the first part, we don't have 
We need more. Oh, look here. Uh, apparently, we have too little fuel on this thing. You can see the fuel access in the low right corner is too low. So we need to add more fuel tanks on this thing in order, in order to make it uh, functional. All right. So we have a beautiful thing. You want to save this now. So save vehicle. It does auto saves, by the way. Uh, it's a tutorial thing. I'm going to save the vehicle. And each time you save the vehicle, the version will increase. So save regularly. That's also smart. Now, I want to make sure that I don't control these weapons. Uh, so I scroll so I'm not controlling them. And we're going to spawn our first enemy to see if this thing even works. And we're going to spawn the thing that everyone wants to try against. And that's the Marauder. So, holding uh, minus, we can make our thing be in slow motion. Uh, it's going to try and not shoot at friendly things. So that's really beautiful that we use the all-in-one. Because the all-in-one uh, weapon, local weapon controllers and stuff like that, they include some kind of failsafe um, that will make you not shoot at yourself. Look here! You can see line of sight forwards is disabled. So when we place this little... Uh, um, uh, it, it's either the missile or the turret. Uh, they, are, they are blocking this one's view. So, if you have a problem detecting enemies, well, maybe you want to have your detection tower a little bit higher up if you're blocked. You can have there and a little there. And now you can see it's not blocked anymore. Right. If we want to not be attached to our ship, remember, double click E, click F9 to remove the HUD. We can see what's happening here. Very nice. We can speed up the time by clicking plus. So we're back to normal time. And here we can see our advanced cannon is working to shoot at this thing. And ooh, we didn't get hit. We were very lucky. And now we are shooting back. Yeah, so this is, this is a pretty nice little starter ship. Explosive damage there. EMP damage is frying AI components. Isn't that quite nice? And I want to see, yeah, there we have that one. And there we have our frag cram shooting there. So we're dealing some damage. And our AI is automatically trying to control ourselves. And we actually got hit by a cram blast there. So that was a little bit scary. Yeah, if we want to change our AI behavior, we can go into here and set it to be circle at distance or something. Now this menu disappeared because our AI actually got blown up. If you want to repair this thing, you can hold Q, designer mode, repair all. And this is something you can only do in like in this mode. And if you want to get more materials, you can actually re refill the materials from within here. You can also hover over a little box here and click Q. And if you want to control your vehicles by hand, make sure that you select them like this. We should actually make sure we're repaired. And now you can aim. And when you hold Q, your weapon systems will actually fire. So for example, it can be a smart idea to maybe snipe out this Marauder's gun here. So we're going to try and aim for the gun and just hold control and it will shoot yeah so that's that's some like basic controls there we're letting the ai take over now a little bit uh, a little thing you can know to be a little bit more stable is that sometimes if your build is very light you need to go into the pid and you need to like uh, make these like less sensitive if you're not moving if you're not very st if you like need more power in your uh, stability countering you can add more propellers or increase this value a little bit so for example if we go to roll we can increase this a little bit there and now they should be working better but if you add it if you boost it too much you might be wobbling very much from side to side one thing i do want to cover that is very useful uh, to not to die that everyone uses as well because of this reason that's, uh, well, shields. 
we're going to build our shields on top of this turret. A lot of people have shields on turrets. So you go down to defense. Then you go to uh, planar shield projector. Make sure it's aimed forward. And the barrels, they can actually clip through blocks like this. So it's really easy. Uh, you don't need to care that this one would block the barrel. If it's uh, not on a sub object, it will not be blocked like that. So uh, click Q on a shield projector uh, and you play around with the range you want them and the angle you want it at and then you go to well the size of it, the width and that and then we have effect strength. So if it's really strong it's gonna take a lot of power especially the larger it is uh, and the stronger it is, the more likely it will be to reflect uh, shots coming in onto it. So, right now you can see that the projectile minimum chance is 20%, and the maximum chance is uh, 40%. So, that means that uh, when he shoots at us at that part with the cram the next time, it's like to 20-40% to chance that that shot will actually just bounce off. And... Uh, because it's in an angle, this chance is like uh, improved. So that's really beautiful. Shields take a lot of power, so make sure that you have the power to uh, use them. And that's the last little semi-advanced thing we want to go into. And that's actually some uh, control. So if you go down to control, not AI, uh, then you'll have A, C, B. Place down two of them. Automatic control blocks. So, uh, we're gonna set up... We can do loads of stuff here. But we're gonna set this up. Range. So, enemy. If there is an enemy within 3000 meters. Okay. Then, we will set uh, shield projectors. Drive. To... I don't know what we had. But let's set it something decently high. If there is an enemy you will set the shields to uh, 8. And we want to make sure that it's unlimited range. Beautiful. Then you want to go to this one. You can click Ctrl C and we copy the settings on this uh, block here. And then we click Ctrl V on this block and we paste the settings. And then we go into the condition and we invert it. And then we go here, you can see now the shield is active. And then we go to this one and we set the drive to zero. So now we will only have a shield online if there is an enemy in the vicinity. So we kill that enemy, so we're gonna spawn a new one. Like that, and now, now we can see when it spawned, the shield automatically got enabled. The shield will not, however, um, be, block, uh, be blocking missiles. They will only be blocking uh, like cannon projectiles of that sort and reduce laser damage as said you can play from the depth forever and still not know everything this is a very very deep game which you can really just play for how many years you ever want to play it it's it's really advanced and a really, really fun game and if you enjoyed this tutorial and from the depth you should probably be subscribing to the channel because i like i like to make from the depth content fun videos and tutorials regularly if you want to catch my from the depth building streams you need to be tuning into my twitch and if you can't watch my streams when i stream my from the depth content you need to subscribe to my other channel the gmodist channel and you can watch the vods there too and some extra content in any case I will throw out here a huge thanks to the commissioned officers in the army of Jim Edison, because these are my patrons who are supporting the channel and making this possible. And that's uh, Admiral LCG Canyon will have Captain Scoobrox, Commander Ejin, Lieutenant Asteria, Powered by Greed and Tyler Russ. And our cadets too. Right, so I hope I see you next time. Catch me on uh, Twitter here and wherever you can find me. I'll see you next time. Have fun in From the Depth. This is your host, Jim Odessimo. We're signing out.